place that's kind of whack. It is? But that's cool. I mean, I'm sure making diesel fuel is not, uh, or biodiesel, that is, isn't easy. I guess we're going to find out. Well, it is a bit of a messy process. We do know this. We do know that it's based on vegetable oil. You collect vegetable oil and then they break it down into a fuel that you can actually use. Does that mean your car smells like a uh, french fry? For most of the time, you smell like good, well-cooked french fries. meeting up with um, Karun uh, Koenig, I believe, and um, he's part of uh, the uh, lab that's set up at UBC to process um, biodiesel. This is about 12,000 parts per million of oil, and there's an oil limit of 150. So we have generated, you see all those black barrels out there, we have generated a lot of wash water. And hopefully we'll learn something today possibly how we might be able to convert the, pod mo uh, the podcast mobile into a biodiesel vehicle and save the environment in the process. Motherfuckers. Save the world. Save the world. You mentioned methanol a bunch of times. Is that something that ends up being a waste product in the end? The methanol is actually an integral part of biodiesel. It's not like a catalyst or anything. It's actually part of the fuel. Um, so you don't want to have methanol as a waste product because it's valuable. So you want to boil it. That's why there's all these, this equipment. In fact, what makes biodiesel dangerous and expensive to do is trying to get, well, part of the reason is trying to get methanol out in a safe way and an efficient way. Like seriously, I'm, I'm not kidding you, there's this guy on, on Sunshine Coast and he, he runs 50%. Now he runs them in Mercedes, old Mercedes, which are very forgiving. Mm -hmm. So like I wouldn't, I wouldn't put that in the new Jetta. You know, like I would, I would just put like ASTM quality biodiesel only in there. But if you've got an older vehicle, it doesn't matter. I mean, people make their own biodiesel and run for years. So it's, and it's your own risk and you know what you're doing. You can tell if your vehicle, it, you know, maybe at some level, maybe it's worth, like I don't know how much an engine costs. If you're making your, your own fuel at some point, maybe, you're, maybe you'll need to replace your engine or do some major repair to it. That might be less expensive than having a lot of equipment to try and get it to the STM. So it's, I think it's a trade-off. The STM standard is also developed for like the most extreme use scenario, like a lot of miles and a lot of fuel. So all those impurities really add up a lot. Yeah. yeah. So we're gonna go check out this guy's truck. Now over here, you'll see, this is what you're talking about, heating the tank. Yeah. Well, these, these two lines here run off the coolant system of the vehicle, right? Okay. And they run into a tube with this long with a pickup. Yeah. And this is the fuel pickup. So it's a heat exchanger in the tank. So it brings up, it drops the, uh, or brings the temperature of the fuel that's going down the fuel line up to whatever the, or close to maybe 120 degrees. So it becomes less, uh, less thick. Yeah. It's so the radiator there, it's okay. sends it's coolant, coolant to here right. and it heats up the oil yeah. and makes it less thick. So it, it just circulates and comes back out. Yeah. Cool. Right. And this is where I fill it. Oh, <laughs> and you that, built this? It's an yeah. extra radiator too. Yeah. Exactly. And then under the hood, cool. all the blue lines are vegetable oil. So it runs through this filter. Oh, you got nice vegetable oil. Too. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah. Goes through this as a six point port valve, so it's either running on diesel or veggie. And there's just switches in the in the. Is that uh, the valve that you were talking about? Yeah, those are the ones that fail all the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah and that's got... basically. All I've done is just tapped into the into the injector pump in. Uh, that's that's inside, yeah. so that's going in, and then there's a return line. 
which is this one right here with the filter on it. Now you just need 10 PSI on that. Yeah. Is this a custom unit that you put in? Yeah, this is a cooler for the PDF, which is the pump-mounted driver for the right. fuel pump. Normally they're down here in a Chevy and they always overheat and they blow up, yeah. right, and they burn up. So I just put it on here to, and put it on a heat sink with a couple computer yeah. fans just to pull some heat off. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. How much do you sell these systems? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, this is all piecemeal. Um, just kind of... Just reading on the internet and figuring out, you know, yeah, what would be the application, how you could do it. I wonder two actors. Bio would be running on the diesel system. That's to get started. To get it started because it because you can start it on, on bio and then get the temperature of the vegetable oil up so the viscosity drops and, and then you, you burn you straight veg. Yeah. Which is wow. environmentally better in terms of well energy content wise. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Energy content. We don't know about the emissions, but the energy content is because you use a lot of energy to make biodiesel, so mm -hmm. Yeah, you lose some of the benefit. Exactly. So this vehicle runs straight diesel and vegetable oil? Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. Wow. It's just a matter of like getting a proper pump for it. I can't, yeah. haven't rigged them up yet. But in, and getting time to do it. I'm going to give you this guy's number. Yeah, that'd be great. He's a... Uh, Sweet stuff. I mean, this is pretty cool. 